So hello there. Uh, welcome to the Tech Accounting. Uh, in this video, uh, we want to look at the question of cost accounting. This is question four on the question paper, and this question paper is of November 2022. So um, remember this question, uh, we have, you are expected to spend about uh, 26 minutes on average of this question. And if you check there, we also have also given the number of marks, but it's at 32 marks uh, on this question. So uh, 32 marks and expected uh, to spend on average 26 minutes. So uh, uh, this is 4.1 and I read, I choose the, uh, the correct term uh, from those within the brackets, only when terminate to the percent numbers, that is 4.1.1 4.1.5 in the other. So uh, the first part of this 4.1.1 reads direct labor and direct material used in the factor are equal to total. Uh, so then we are given uh, two options, overhead or pipe, and then uh, obviously uh, we have to relate it to cost. So um, we, uh, the most appropriate uh, that we have there, we uh, remember when we get our direct labor and our direct material is our direct cost, we are supposed to get your pipe cost. So remember in our manufacturing account, uh, we are supposed to get direct labor and then we get direct material, then we get our prime cost. So we see that our prime cost is the uh, is the correct uh, option that we have there. So we have got prime uh, as our correct option. Then we can go to the next question, uh, 4.1.2. Reads the salary of the factor cleaner is a or N. Uh, we're given two options again, direct or indirect labor cost. So uh, what we have there, uh, remember direct, direct cost, uh, we are saying it's a cost that can be uh, easily traced uh, to the production of a certain or a specific uh, good. So uh, and then if you go to indirect now, indirectly, uh, indirect cost now is a cost that we cannot easily trace uh, to the production of specific good. So uh, in this case, uh, we are talking about a factory cleaner. So this is just a cleaner. We cannot directly uh, trace uh, the, this cost uh, and relate it to a particular good. So uh, we we'll see that uh, the most appropriate that we have there is indirect. So uh, indirect is most appropriate that we have there, which is the correct one. Then we go to 4.1.3, grade of a building is considered a dash cost, uh, we're given two options again, factor overhead and delivery. Uh, so remember, the delivery uh, expenses are the expenses that we incur during the transportation of goods uh, from one point to the other, usually uh, from our business uh, to the customer's business. So um, in this case, uh, rent of building, remember, is a fixed cost and we are related to a factor overhead. So a uh, factor overhead is the correct answer that we have there. So we go to the next one, 4.1.4, factor overhead cost, attached manufacturing expenses that are related to the production of finished goods. So um, factor over its costs are remember they re, uh, they relate to indirect uh, material costs, indirect labor costs and other other fixed costs that we have uh, in the business. Uh, so uh, if you check there uh, you see that uh, the direct uh, the direct uh, costs they are uh, the, the costs that we we have uh, earlier explained is uh, direct material, uh, direct labor. And uh, if you check it uh, over it, uh, cost, they are indirect costs that we cannot uh, uh, easily trace uh, to uh, the production of specific good. So uh, basically here over it, uh, the total over it cost now, the most appropriate that we have there is indirect. So uh, we have got uh, indirect is the correct answer there. Then you go to 4.1.5, an expense for factor, an expense for factor rent is reported as a dash uh, cost. So remember, uh, in expense for factor rent, uh, we have already explained that uh, it falls under the factor over a cost. Remember, this is a fixed cost, and we have explained that fixed costs uh, fall under factor over a cost. So uh, we have got factor over a cost is the correct answer that we have there. Then we can move on to the second part of the question, where by now we are we are on well, 4.2, which says it is, it is saying explain the difference between fixed cost and variable cost. So uh, remember, fixed costs, they are costs that do not vary with the level of production. Uh, what we are saying is uh, uh, even if the uh, production is zero units, you are going to incur the same uh, amount of fixed costs that you are going to incur uh, even if you produce 1,000 units or you produce 500 units or if you eat 1 million units. So the fixed costs remain uh, constant like uh, rent uh, becomes a fixed cost. Uh, no matter how uh, you are going to produce nothing, you are going to pay the rent. So this becomes a fixed cost. So and the variable cost, they directly vary with the level of production. If the level of production increases, you are going to see the variable variable cost also increase. So this is what we have. This is the main difference that we have. So we can put that in writing. So uh, let's try to put it in writing. This is our 4.2. Uh, 
they are now on 4.2. So if we put it in writing, we can just say uh, 4.2, and uh, we can start by variable cost. Whereby we are saying uh, these are costs uh, which vary. In direct proportion uh, to the amounts uh, we can just say I uh, use the term uh, to the level level to the level of our goods produced. And obviously, uh, you can also give a, an example of a variable cost. Uh, remember, we can talk about a direct labor, we can talk about direct material, whereby uh, an example of direct material, we are talking about the raw materials. And um, this is an explanation that we have in terms of vari variable cost. So uh, you can just present it as such and that we uh, maybe explain uh, in terms of what we mean by variable cost, then believe that you also explain in terms of fixed cost. Uh, in those explanations, uh, you have a uh, uh, highlighted at uh, the differential between the two terms. So here we are saying uh, fixed costs. Uh, fixed costs, we are saying they do not vary with the level of production. In other words, we are saying uh, they remain constant. Uh, so we are saying these are costs uh, that remain constant uh, irrespective of the amount of goods produced. So uh, this is what we have in terms of our 4.2. So we can just uh, go there and try to see the next question that we have. And a 4.3 reads up, uh, that Malgas manufactures and sells kites for children. The selling price of the kite is 125 grams. He manufactured 2,500 kites during October, provided below is a summary of all his costs for October 2022. So uh, we are given the required part, uh, which is saying complete the following 4.3.1 is saying calculate the direct material cost of the kite for October 2022. So uh, the information that we are going to relate to is the information that we are given. Uh, so we can just maybe try to go to the next page and see what uh, the information that we have. So this is the information that we have. And the question is saying, uh, calculate the direct material cost per kite for October uh, 2022. So remember direct material, uh, direct costs, we said these are costs that can be easily traceable with the production of a specific good. So uh, in this case, uh, we are going to look at uh, the direct materials that we have obviously uh, uh, consist of the direct material and direct level. So if you go to our question, you'll see that uh, from here we've got material per kite, which is we're given it to square square plant, and we are going to multiply it by the number of uh, units that has been produced for that period. And then we've got wood per kite, we've got five plants, they are all material. Uh, this is material uh, per kite. And then we have got uh, wood per kite, and then we've got line per cut per kite, also we've got five plants. So all these are, are consisting of our material. Uh, material, uh, in other words, we are saying uh, this is direct material. Uh, direct material. And then uh, uh, we also have wages per kite. So this one is now representing our direct uh, direct labor. So remember, uh, we said we, uh, if we are supposed to add these two to get our total for direct, so we are saying direct material and then we add our direct labor. But if you go back to our question, let's try to uh, see the phrasing. Our question is saying calculate the direct material cost per kite. So uh, we are only concerned with the direct material here on 4.3.1. So we are saying uh, 4.3.1, we are supposed to add uh, point one. we are supposed to add 25 uh, is it our material plus 5 for wood and then 5 uh, for line. Then we get our total for material. So basically we are saying 25 uh, plus five, uh, plus five. And then I would see that uh, the answer that we are going to get there is going to be your Z5 plus. So uh, this is uh, the total for material, for direct material. So uh, we go again to see the next question. What does it say? 
Uh, if you go to the next question now, it reads, I uh, calculate the total manufacturing overheads from over 2022. Remember, overheads are related to them as our fixed, uh, our fixed cost that we have in the, uh, in the, in the question. So we are going to pick all the uh, the fixed costs that we have, and also we are also going to uh, put our our indirect material, our indirect labor. We are going to also also going to include them there, plus other other fixed costs that might be mentioned in the question. So if you go there, you would see that uh, we are given there a list of um, uh, items that we are given there. We are just supposed to pick what is supposed to be under manufacturing overhead. So uh, if you go down, uh, let's just try to bring our next question, which is our four point. 4.3.2. So if you go uh, to the list of balance that we are given, we are just going to pick uh, those uh, items that we have. So you see that uh, cost for the month, we have got salary or factor for supervisor, it's one of them. We are going to pick 5,000. We pick again the rent for factor, it's an overhead. And also we pick water and electricity of factor. Also, as long as uh, the cost is a uh, relation or uh, to factor, it becomes a, 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 a manufacturing overhead. So we have got our 2,500 again for water and electricity. And then uh, we also have the indirect material cost. Remember I said indirect material and indirect labor also are part of uh, manufacturing overhead. So we have these ones. So uh, we, are add, we are going to add those four whereby we are going to save our 5,000. Uh, we are going to add our 8,000. And then we add our 2,500. And then we add our 500. And then we try to uh, add there, obviously, the total now that we are going to get there is going to be 60,000. So this is what we have in terms of 4.3.1. And obviously, we are going to 4.3.2 and 4.3.3, sorry, and then we'll try to see what does it say. It says calculate the total production cost for October 2022 if 2,500 kites were produced. So this is the uh, total number of units that has been produced. And then they are saying calculate the total uh, production cost. Remember, all the manufacturing overheads, they are not going to vary with the level of production. So we're not going to uh, uh, make a proportion in terms of the uh, number of uh, kites that we have produced. That is 2,500. We are just going to pick the total amount that we are giving in the question because they do not vary with the level of production. Remember, uh, we said fixed cost before other, 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 other manufacturing overheads. Then, uh, after, after getting the total for manufacturing overheads, we, we add the, 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 the indirect now, sorry, we add the direct material and the direct labor. Whereby we are saying direct material and direct labor value with the level of production. That's why we are going to see uh, the cost per unit, then you multiply by 2,500, which is a total number of units. Uh, since we are saying uh, when it's a direct cost, it varies directly, uh, it varies in direct proportion to the level of uh, production. So we are, we, are, we are coming here, this 4.3.3. So we are saying, uh, let's try to uh, calculate that one. We are saying 4.3.3. 4 so on 4.3.3, uh, uh, we are saying, uh, let's try to see there. We are saying, remember, we've already calculated uh, the, the total uh, for uh, manufacturing overhead. So obviously, we have now uh, the total for manufacturing overheads, whereby we got. Uh, let's just try to see at the total that we got there. Go there. See so that we got 16,000 is what we're talking So on top of 6,000, we are going to get our direct material and direct labor now. So we are saying 16,000. Uh, already we have 16,000, so we are saying 16,000 here. Then we get our direct material. Then we get also direct material, direct labor. Remember, the 16,000 is representing our, our overheads. And we add our, our direct cost. So uh, for direct material, we are saying uh, we got, when we add 25 plus 5 plus 5, we got 35. So this is representing our 35 for direct, for, for direct material. 35 runs for direct material. So we are saying 16,000 plus our direct material, we have got 35 runs. So we are saying 35. And then we multiply by uh, the level of production. Remember that we are given there. Uh, we are given it in the question. They just repair break uh, there see that we are given 2,500, so we are going to multiply by 2,500. So if you come back here, we are saying uh, times 2,500. So here times 2,500. This is our direct material. Then we get our direct labor. We also have, uh, if you come to here, we've got wages per kite completed, which is 50 rand. So 50 rand is representing our direct uh, labor. So we have got 50 rand per unit, but we've got 2,500 units, so we are going to say 50 rand times 2,500. 
So unless we have to calculate the search and we calculate it, uh, you're going to see that the total that we are going to get there is 228,500. Uh, so this is uh, going to be uh, the total, uh, that is the total production cost for October 2022 for the 2,500 kites that were produced. So uh, we go to the next question, which is 4.3.4. Let's try to see what does it say. So 4.3.4 is saying calculate the unit cost of production. So unit cost, we're just going to say the total cost that we got, uh, that we got there for 4.3.3, and then we divide by the total number of units, which is 2,500. So basically we are saying, uh, we are saying there 4.3.4, we come here, we say the total cost that we got here to 220,500. We are going to uh, divide uh, that one by the number of units, which is 2,500. Then we get the cost per unit. So here we are just saying, uh, we are now on two, two point two points, uh, uh, two point two point four. Sorry, so we are saying our 228,500. 228,500. Then we divide by the total number of units, which is 2,500. And then if you divide there, you are going to get 91 rand 340. So this is uh, the uh, unit cost of production. So uh, we go to the next one, which is 4. Point, uh, sorry, we are now on 4.3.5. Uh, 4.3.5. So remember, this one was supposed to be 4.3.4. So this one, what we have. So we, we go there to check what does it say, 4.3.5. 4.3.5 means calculate the percentage uh, profit that Danimog has earned the kite during October 2022 if the kites were sold at uh, 125 uh, each. So you can just maybe try to go through again, say calculate the percentage profit that done uh, Malgas and the kite during the October 2022. So what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the profit whereby we are given there that uh, each was uh, sold for 155. Uh, that is what we have. Uh, this is the uh, selling price per unit, 155, and we also have the total cost per unit, uh, total cost of production per unit. Uh, we, we, we calculated earlier on 4.3.4 and we got 9140. So we are going to save 155 minus 91, 91 rand 40, and then we divide by the 91 rand 40. So basically what we are saying uh, is uh, the cost price, uh, basically we are just going to say, uh, let's try to see formula that we are going to use. We are going to say selling price minus the cost price. And these are these are the values that we have per unit, uh, selling price per unit minus cost price per unit, then we divide by cost price per unit, and then we multiply by 100 over 1. Remember, and they are asking the percentage. So it's supposed to multiply by 100 over 1. So as such, that's why how we are going to calculate it. So if you go there, uh, we are just going to do it as such. So remember, we are saying our, our selling price minus our cost price uh, divided by our cost price times 100 over 1. So basically, our selling price that we are given there is 155. So we are saying 155 uh, there. 155, and then we are going to subtract your, your cost, which is 91,40. And here is 155 rand, and then we divide by 91,40. And then the answer that we are supposed to get there, we are supposed to multiply, multiply the added over one because we need to convert it to a percentage. So when we do that, uh, you are going to see that the answer that you are going to get there is going to be your 69.6%. So we have got 69.6% and this is rounded off to one decimal place. So this is what we have. Uh, if you round it off to the whole number, obviously uh, here, our six is going to change our time to become uh, 10. And this 10 is, uh, it's the one that's going to change our okay, six to become seven. So it becomes uh, 70%. So uh, we can uh, also say 70% if you round it off to the nearest uh, uh, whole number. But if you round it off to the nearest uh, first decimal place, are uh, you going to have uh, 67.6% is our uh, is our answer there. So uh, so this is uh, the end of our question. Uh, those who have been subscribed, please subscribe and share. We are still coming with more videos. As for this video, I'm sending out to it again in Facebook.